Okay, I'm going to walk you through um, a little KMZ file I put together that contains some of the data relevant to the June 13th, uh, 2013 Meteo tsunami, um, or at least the event that we think might be a Meteo tsunami. Um, and uh, so I'm going to walk through just the way you would do it if you opened up the, the, uh, the file yourself. So I'm going to open up um, a KMZ file here. And when you first open it up um, in Google Earth, it usually wants to do this... Uh, this funny tilting stuff and puts all the images on together. So first thing you want to do is uh, click in the middle, hit the R key to reset this back to the uh, untilted view and then move this time slider on the left, move it up a little bit and then move this one here down until you basically just have one image or so. Um, and then you can grab that right side and um, actually let's see here, I guess we have to move the left side a little bit toward the right um, about in there and then we can move Make sure they go together here. Okay, so there, there, there we go. Okay, so up here um, we're looking at the um, the local time, and down here uh, we're looking at the time um, in uh, time in uh, uh, Zulu. Okay, so um, we start, first started got uh, first found out about this from some observations here in um, in, in Woods Hole. If we uh, click on the little dot here, this is actually the record that was sent around in an email to us alerting us that this had happened. So the green line here is the residual between the observed and predicted. And so you can see this one, about a one foot high um, fluctuation that was seen. They could occur over uh, about 10 minutes or so. So these fluctuations were rapid and they caused strong currents in the entrance of Falmouth Harbor and some other places. Uh, that were was noticed and um, alerted folks that something unusual was going on. Um, and if we if we go down here, this is these are pages from uh, NOAA websites. And if we can drill down and find exactly that time when that first uh, maximum occurred, if we want to if we want to call this the um, when it arrived, it was at uh, 1937, the first little peak at at Wiz Hole. And if we walk over then, no, so that's that's 1937. A Z, and if we go over here to Newport, look at the same plot, 1908 Z, so about um, half an hour earlier, and uh, and then if we go over here to Montauk, which is kind of around the corner, we see 1902 Z, similar fluctuations, sort of rapid fluctuations at all places, although the signals look fairly, the details of the signals are pretty different. So could this be caused by... Uh, um, a fast moving front that's moving at the same speed as the uh, uh, water wave speed. Um, that's what makes uh, a meteo tsunami. So here's the radar loop. And um, if we if we go back here, uh, what I've done is um, I've d digitized the position of this red the red line here by indicate these these white lines every hour. Um, and the presumption is that there's very strong winds along this front that are moving toward the east and moving toward the front on the back side of the front. Um, and um, if we to zoom in a little bit here, and uh, so here's the front at um, at 1429Z, uh, and so that's uh, uh, that's five hours before uh, the the signal was seen in Woods Hole. So if we move forward here, um, the, this first white line here is at uh, about 1445, and then the next, uh, we, in the next hour, it moves about 60 kilometers uh, to this next uh, white line. And actually, if you expand this little tab over here and click on uh, that white line there, uh, the front position, it, it, I have a little information here. So 60 kilometers traveled over this hour, and that uh, the optimal water depth for, or the or the depth at which the, the front um, would be moving at the same speed as the water wave would be at about 30 meters of water depth. And if you look here and you, you take your eye down here to the elevation, if we look in this region here, we see it's from zero to about 30 meters. And then it accelerates, moves offshore. It's moving faster as it heads offshore, which is moving into deeper water where the water speed move, water waves move faster, which is also um, good for uh, medio tsunami growth. So if we move, here comes the front moving. To one hour later, it's out here, and uh, the front there has traveled, then it's traveled 90 kilometers over the previous hour, which is about 65 meters water depth. And if you can, again look down here, you see, so we're moving from 30 meters if we move offshore 
getting into like 60, 70 meters water depth. So it seems that the, the water depths are about right for um, pushing a pile of water cr created by this, uh, this very strong wind. And if we look at here, so right here, we're at 1645Z. Um, so this is still uh, a couple of hours before the signal was seen in Woods Hole. Um, and if we look at it, it, it passed this Met buoy, the Texas Tower. If we if we look at the wind record there, we see this big 53 knot, 27 meter per second gust. It's right at 1643 when that front passed. So adding uh, evidence that there really was there really were strong winds accompany this front. Um, and if we look at then so the, and then that the Dart buoy offshore here, there was a, a blip in the elevation seen uh, later on, about 20 minutes later. And so he, right here after 1700 Z, there's this little, little increase here. And if we drill down um, here, we see this little blip in elevation occurring at um, actually about uh, 1705. So yeah, tw 20 minutes after it passed the front past the Texas Tower. And um, the thought here is that, uh, okay, as the water depths are increasing, um, the and, and right here is the this little black line is the shelf break. Certainly, when it hits the shelf break, the the what happens is the this amount of water starts uh, moves into deeper water depths and very rapidly moves out to I can move out to the dark buoy and greatly outpaces the speed of the front. It also can reflect off of the shelf break as been has been shown in other papers. So um, if we look at the travel times, um, just computed this uh, you know very simple. Um, travel times from about this location at about this time, um, and it looks something like like this. So these are t travel times in hours from a location just east of the uh, northeast of the Texas Tower. And of course, wouldn't really be a point source. It's probably something obviously more complicated, looking more like the front. But anyway, uh, just to see if it makes sense, the time it takes to get from this this point here out to the Dart buoy is, um, this is the 0.33 hour line, 20 minutes is indeed between, you know, maybe 20, 25 minutes. So it looks like it works out that way. Um, and uh, does it work out the other way? So um, for Cape, for Falmouth, um, where we saw the signal at about 19, um, 1930. So 1930 is about, um, two and three quarters hours later. And so this is the two and a half hour line and this is the three hour line. So it looks like it's pretty darn close. So that if there's something, some some uh, disturbance created here, some water wave here that um, was released could actually travel to the dart buoy and also travel to Woods Hole at about the right time, um, about half hour earlier at Newport. And um, perhaps depending on how long it takes to actually get around the corner here at Montauk, perhaps hits Montauk at more or less the same time. And of course, this is a more simplified model. So it looks plausible that this could explain what was going on in this region. And if it reflects off the shelf break here and comes back, then we would um, would actually be adding a little bit to these times. But, um, but here in uh, Atlantic City, um, about two hours later, there is also um, some uh, increased elevations and at Barnegat Bay here, actually some people were um, were uh, washed off of a, a jetty uh, by the by the rapid the wave coming in and out of the of the harbor here. So it seems all um, fairly you know it seems plausible that this could have been caused by um, this front here as it uh, piling up water that then reflects off the shelf break and is released um, off to, in, in the deeper part portion of it going to the deeper water to the the dart buoy. That's about it.